What's up, queers? Welcome to fucking Pride Month! <laughs> Welcome to the swamp. This month, we're fucking doing gay shit on the podcast. <laughs> the swamp, that's the name of our show. <laughs> it's an acronym. Stands for some whack-ass movie podcasting. And usually each month, we pick a theme. We rock <laughs> some, some whack-ass movies that fall into yep. that theme. And this we month, sh- it's Pride Month. Yeah, Pride Month. And what a better excuse to watch Portrait of a Lady on Fire mm-hmm. if I... If I could think of a better one, I would tell you. Yeah, no, this is probably the best um, queer cinema that I've ever seen. So if you want to fight me on that, feel free. But I feel like a lot of people would agree with me on that one. It's it's definitely one of the better ones. And and for, for starting off this month, if you want to criticize our choices for... for feel th- free. But like, you're probably right. We're mm-hmm. not picking movies that we think are a really great representation mm-hmm. or, you know, diverse perspectives, whatever. There's mm-hmm. other podcasts out there where you can find really great information. It's just not here. I'm not that smart. Mm-hmm. We're doing yeah. cult classics, fun shit. Films we like. It, yeah. So, mm-hmm. you know, I implore you to go watch Paris is Burning to go watch Moonlight. Yeah, I just, PC. I'm not that smart and I'm not going to tell you anything you don't already mm-hmm. know. Yeah. Which I'm not going to do about this movie either, mm-hmm. but I just yeah. like it. I'm just here to gush for an hour <laughs> yeah. about this film. In more ways than one, we're like, <laughs> gush about this movie. Portrait of a Lady on Fire, more like Portrait of a Lady fucking sobbing and the mm-hmm. lady's me on my yep. couch alone. I don't think there's ever been a time that I haven't watched this and cried. <gasps> and I've seen this like at least four times, at I, the bare minimum. So this was actually my second watch. My you only... watched it with me the first yes, time you Yes, the ever first saw time it. we, over a uh, deep COVID core season, <laughs> we would do like video chat, like Netflix party mm-hmm. type movie watches. And usually I would get way too inebriated mm-hmm. to even yeah. stay awake for yeah. the whole thing. The Okja incident. Oh my God, the Okja incident where I fell asleep <laughs> five minutes in, but I stayed on the camera. I didn't know whether to like close <laughs> out. <laughs> I was like, well, I'll finish the movie. <laughs> but you know, a bottle of rum in your bed by yourself, watching a movie with a friend virtually because there's a (laughs) pandemic like obviously I'm gonna go a little harder than usual (laughs) but this movie I remember was another instance where I definitely Mm -hmm. was like chugging wine from the bottle in my bed and the only way I could stop myself Mm -hmm. from getting really choked up was I would open snapchat on my Mm -hmm. phone and put the the filters <laughs> on the characters so I'd make them look like, like babies a, yeah, like or a like taco. a taco. And I was like, I was yeah, like, oh my yeah. god, I can't fucking cry in front of Emily right now on, on FaceTime. I gotta fucking put the Snapchat filters <laughs> on these characters. I'll have to put, I definitely have that saved somewhere because I did um, drunk movie reviews mm. for a very long time and on occasion I'll still do them. Um, I, f- I feel like that is in some ways the origin of this podcast yeah. was you do the drunk movie reviews and I was like, wait, I don't can get in on that. Yeah, so I think that was your first drunk movie review. Yes. I, um, I definitely have some taco videos <laughs> from that floating around somewhere. Of uh, Heloise and... Is Marianne. Marianne? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I like that Heloise has two accent marks in her name. I know. <laughs> and also, so this, this isn't coming completely out of left field because this movie was suggested to us mm-hmm. by an actual person from the country of France. So, Ooh, so it's actually this is a person that I met in real life. I oh, know this okay. person, and she on one of the very earliest, mm-hmm. uh, you know, when we put out on Instagram, like, mm-hmm. hey, we're gonna do a podcast. What movies should we mm-hmm. watch? Yeah. Uh, her name is Emma. She's nice. really fun, cool. She's like, thanks, Emma. She sent us the title in French, you know, because she's French, and mm. and so I was like, I was like, hell yeah, girl, you know, it's gonna come mm-hmm. at some point yeah. or another. So yeah. thanks. here it is for you. Yeah, for for Emma and for all the all of our queers. Uh, <laughs> if you're French, if you're gay. If you just like good mm-hmm. movies. If you want to cry. If you want to know how a 1800s DIY abortion on the beach would happen. Mm-hmm. If that doesn't pique your interest, I really don't know what else would. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Should we give a review? I feel like we can do this pretty quickly. Yeah, because honestly, not that much happens no. in this movie. But so if you've never seen Portrait of a Lady on Fire, I totally think you should. Yeah. This podcast yeah. will not be spoiler free. So if you want to really go have your most authentic Full experience. Yeah. I believe I watched it's, it on Hulu. Yeah, it's on Hulu. Um, I think it, I've seen it like bounce around on mm-hmm. a couple streaming platforms. But yeah. even if you gotta rent it for like three ninety nine, this I promise is probably you, the best use of your money for yeah. a film. Um, but if you haven't seen it, the plot. Mm-hmm. So pretty much, um, it's like seventeen seventy. Um, seventeen seventy six. 
Oh no. <laughs> Where are they? They're in Brittany. <clears throat> Br- yeah. Brittany, which is an island. An island off the coast of France somewhere. Yes. Um, and Marianne is a painter and she's been commissioned to paint this portrait um, of this young woman who's to be married to this man in Milan. Um, and the whole thing is she has to do it in secret because this woman will not pose for her portrait. Because she's not super thrilled about getting married. I wouldn't be either. And neither was her sister. Yeah, her yeah, she's she's taking the place of her sister who killed herself. So already she's in a really tough spot. She's like, damn, sis didn't want to get married to this guy, mm-hmm. and I'm probably gay and mm-hmm. don't like to sit still. Uh, so this is gonna be really tough yeah. for everyone. So yeah, so, so she, she Marianne goes, has to do it in secret mm-hmm. and she has yeah. to like kind of like stare at her from afar and yeah. pretend I think they They're walking that, companions. Yeah, she pretends to be just like a, a person like a handmaiden or whatever. Yeah. A person like staying at their house. Yeah. Someone someone to keep her company and so she goes and she paints um, the initial portrait and then she tells Marianne she's like hey I did this and at this point they've kind of become a little close like they've they've become friendly yeah they're pals they're pals um not quite gal pals yet but we're getting (laughs) um and so um Heloise sees the painting and she's like dude this is the best you could do (laughs) kind of egging her on and she's like this dull lifeless trash piece of art she's like that's what you you think I look like this is what you think of me (laughs) I would be offended too honestly but it it honestly wasn't It wasn't bad. bad. It wasn't her, though. And That's that was the whole true. thing. That's true. So, um, so Marianne destroys the painting. Um, and the mom is pissed because the last painter who had been hired to do it mm-hmm. also destroyed his painting. Yeah. Probably, you know, we would assume under similar circumstances. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so she destroys the painting and the mom who's around who hired her to do yeah. it, she's like kind of pissed. She's like, this is bullshit. Yeah. You need to get out of my fucking yeah. face. But then Heloise is like, oh, I'll, sit. Well, I'll, I'll do it. I'll pose. I'll do it. Uh, like I bet she could do it if you just like actually fucking mm-hmm. looked at me for more than her face is like covered up by a scarf. Yeah, for, like ninety like, percent of... of the time they spend together. And Marianne is like, yeah, I just have been really looking at her ear in really great detail, and I'm like, girl, that is that is not what you need to be doing mm-hmm. right now. But so it kind of devil just into she'll sit for her, and she's they start painting, and the, but mom, the mom the goes mom's away. Go, yeah. Mom's gone away for a week. Um, this other little um, servant girl in the house is pregnant and she's like yo i need to get an abortion asap <laughs> and so they go and they, they they do this little abortion side quest <laughs> <laughs> which is so good but then it like doesn't work and they're like we got to bring you to the local obgyn which is literally just some woman's house and she uh she sticks her fist up there they get rid of the baby i have all is yeah. well mm-hmm. But then after it was right after that was when they started to they, they like kissed for the first yeah. time and they they're like oh we're girlfriends now yeah we, <laughs> <laughs> you are the love of my life and I would die yeah, for you it's exactly. been six days and yeah. this is just my it went truth. from like twenty to like nine thousand like <laughs> so quickly and then it just kind of like goes on from there and you get to see their romance and their love for each other and eventually the mother comes back and the portrait's done and she. She's Marianne's gotta go. Yeah. And uh-huh. and they kind of have this, like, little breakup at the end where mm-hmm. she's like, I'm gonna be leaving. Mm-hmm. And she's like, do you not want me to do that? But then Marianne's kind of like, well, I get, like, your position. Like, yeah. I'm not gonna ask you to not get uh-huh. married to your betrothed, yeah. you know. Um, yeah. He's, like, probably a duke or some shit. Yeah. She's probably some sort of, like, royalty socialite. So she's like, yeah, I'm not gonna, like, ask you to, like, so, so, give to... up your life because we are, like, mm-hmm. gal pals and we had a nice little romp yeah. for two weeks. And then that makes Heloise really sad. But she probably knows mm-hmm. in her heart, too, that that's, like, not the sitch. But then mm-hmm. they still remain girlfriends for the remaining 24 hours. And then they just part, they just, you know. They part, part ways. ways. Um, but, yeah, no, that that fight scene, because um, it's, it's a bit of a fight scene. It's yeah. like they finish the portrait and... Heloise is like, oh, so you've got a grudge now because you don't want me to go. And Marianne's like, really not giving her a straight answer. And she's like, tell me what you think, (laughs) please. Um, But that was like probably some of the best acting in the entire film, especially like Adele Hanel, I think is how you say her last name. Yeah, for Heloise. Heloise. Yeah, she plays Heloise. Um, She gave such an outstanding performance. I was blown away by her throughout the entire movie and especially in this scene. Like, the range of emotion that she goes mm. through is just outstanding. And I 
like I've said this before, like I'm really not down for a two week romance. <laughs> like in a film when people meet each other and then yeah. 24 hours later yeah. they're like, I would die for you and I'm going to mm-hmm. put it all on the line. Yeah. That just doesn't happen yeah. in real life. And I get that, you know, for the sake of film, sometimes you have to mm-hmm. fluff things up. But nobody is that fucking in love after knowing each hey. other for two days. Hey. But these bitches, I fucking believed it. You, they- ever, you ever hear of a U-Haul lesbian? <laughs> <laughs> well, like, I was like, I... I get it. Yeah. If I, I would, I would fucking die for this bitch too. Uh-huh. Like I get yeah. it. Just the, the way they like look at each other and shit. I'm like, oh my God. Oh what? my God. They're so in love. That's part of the reason that I think the movie is so good because it definitely explores like the, the female gaze mm-hmm. a lot. And I feel like there is such a thing as like, sort of like the gay stare. Have you ever heard that phrase? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> you just kind of like, like almost acknowledge. It's like, you're gay. I'm gay. Okay, cool. Like we're both gay. <laughs> See, it's like, are you like, I don't do you think, think either, I'm hot? Do you think, I don't think either of them really knew that they were gay, right? I don't really know. <laughs> well, I think Heloise had an inkling because <laughs> she lived in a convent. Yeah. And she was like, yeah, I'm, I'm cool with this. I get to listen to my music. I get to read my books. I guess Marianne no man. too. Yeah, Marianne too was also like said that she had known love in the past and that also she indicated that she also did a DIY abortion on herself at one point. Was it on her... She definitely got a DIY well, abortion. Well, I just... Uh, when, so Sophie is the name of oh, the yeah, handmaiden yeah, yeah, yeah. girl and she was like, you've done this before? And, and she's like, yeah. And she's like, yeah, I have. And that's mm-hmm. when Heloise is like, you've known love? Like, basically, like, mm-hmm. you fucked? <laughs> and she was like, yeah, like I did. <laughs> But, like, not anymore. But, like, yeah. I did. Yeah. And that was, like, kind of, like, okay, she, she had a relationship with a man in some capacity mm-hmm. in the past. And I, yeah. I thought it was implied that the, the DIY abortion had been on herself. Well, but it was then, definitely on herself. But then she, like, she like, like, later said that she's, like, oh, I'm, well, I'm never I don't really have to get married. Yeah. She's, like, my dad's got a business. I don't I need can... to. And then Heloise is, like, you fucking bitch. <laughs> she's, like, you think your life is so great. It fucking is i have to get married to some man i don't even know and marianne's like yeah that sucks it's a real bummer can you please look at me for a little longer so i can just really picture the shape of your eyes for when i have to paint you in secret later (laughs) but that's a tough task i couldn't imagine Uh, well so in the beginning i was kind of like honestly it doesn't have to look like her to a T. That, yeah. The second portrait she paints that she just posted. It's to for, a T. It's, yeah. it's like a photograph. But like the first one would have sufficed. But back in the day, the whole thing was like, you've got a daughter, I've got a son, we both have a lot of money, let's sort it out. Uh-huh. But can we just get a picture to make sure she's not fucking ugly? Yeah. Which is like, okay, so if you're gonna perfo- per, like um get a professionally done mm-hmm. portrait... You're gonna look good. Yeah. You know? Like, they're not gonna make you look yeah. bad. Isn't so, that what happened with, like, Henry VIII and one of yeah, his wives? Yeah, so my favorite, my favorite wife of Henry VIII is Anne of Cleves, <laughs> and she's from Germany. I like that you have a favorite person. Oh, well, of course. Of course. Um, and so she was from Germany, and mm-hmm. she was, I think, like, wife number four. Like, she was, like, three or four. So I she think was that's in the right. middle. Yeah, she was, yeah, like, yeah. in the middle. And, um... And so they send her, they send Henry the portrait, and he was like, great, sounds Dude, great. Dude, she's gorgeous, well, yeah. Well, he's, you know, she's fine. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, I could smash. Yeah. <laughs> and at this point, he was, like, old, fat, couldn't yeah. get it up. Like, he was basically <laughs> like, I just need somebody to fucking pump out some sons for me. <laughs> this bitch from Germany will probably get the job uh-huh, done. And yeah. she shows up. And he was like, absolutely not. <laughs> I guess there's a lot more, um, there's a lot, like, deeper layers to the story, though, where actually, I guess there was, like, an incident where, like, somebody was playing a prank on somebody else mm-hmm. and, like, asked her to kiss them, and she was like, no, and then there was, like, this whole, like, some drama happened, huh. so I think that the use of the portrait not being representative is used as kind of a blanket mm-hmm. cover, mm-hmm. but so she did, so they... I don't know if they got married and then they got divorced or if they just never got married or they were just like betrothed or whatever. But she basically got to live under the care of the royal family for the rest of her life. She basically just got to like hang out and basically be a queen without ever actually That's ideal. Right? And she was just like chilling. She was like hanging out. So she's like, yeah, you think I'm ugly? That's fine. You just gave me a house. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But anyways, it's, yeah, basically the portraits being given, in my opinion, just need to look like you enough, like hair color, eye color. She's got pretty distinguished eyebrows. Put those in there. Mm -hmm. Put her in a nice dress. Be like, this is generally an image of... It's like if you were to put a Snapchat filter on yourself and send it to your crush. Like, 
this isn't what I'm gonna look like all of the time, but this is the way I'm going to present myself yeah. to you for the first time. Mm-hmm. And so that first portrait, I mean, obviously there were a lot deeper layers as to why it, you know, she destroyed it and whatever. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, that would have been fine. Yeah. Oh, it totally would be. And I think it was that's for why selfish that, reasons. She didn't yeah. want to say goodbye, and no. she like she didn't want to have like be s- seen. Um, in that light, I think to Heloise, yeah, like, well, yeah. Either. Well, like her criticism meant the most to her. Because yeah, they- she was. You saw it. She got super upset, <laughs> super fast. <laughs> but also, like, yeah, that is a pretty hard fucking thing to ask somebody. Like, okay, you're gonna go on a walk with this girl. You got to stand yeah. ten feet behind uh-huh. her. She's not really gonna look at you. Yeah. Uh, we are gonna need you to paint a lifelike portrait of her. But this bitch, this bitch is a really fucking good painter, though. She's like, outstanding. Like, I, I guess they had, um, they, like, hired a real artist, obviously, who painted it in kind of real time as mm-hmm. they were filming yeah. it, because obviously they needed to, but all of the shots of her hand mm-hmm. as she's painting was the artist and not the actress. Well, that makes which sense, Which makes sense, yeah. but, like, that's crazy to me. I don't know, the fact that people can fucking do art like that, holy Oh, shit. yeah. I was also thinking, though, that maybe there was some kind of, like de-statusing of this family because the mom's portrait Mm -hmm. is fucking huge. Oh, yeah. The mom's portrait... Like, up above the mantel Up above the mantel place. And it was, like, I'm gonna say, like, fucking six feet by six feet and it's in this really ornate and it was very, like, Mm -hmm. highbrow, gives me royal vibes. Whereas Mm -hmm. this one was, like... Modest. Yeah, yeah. More chill. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, ooh, is there some... Is there some sort of... I mean, not that that really matters, but... Like, her father... Like, we don't don't meet Heloise's father or anything like that. We don't know the situation with the family. And it's... Mm -hmm. That's the other good thing about this movie is there's no men, really. Yeah. (laughs) It's just women Mm -hmm. on an island fucking vibing. (laughs) There's... I think the only men in the film give one or less words of dialogue. Yeah. Like, they'll mm-hmm. say, like, like hello, or, mm-hmm. like, whatever. But, like, that's it. I think we see the men on the boat, mm-hmm. and we see one man in the kitchen, Yeah, that which indicates that he was some sort of, he had like, hired help, back, yeah. yeah, to bring the mother back. Mm-hmm. So, I'm like, I think yeah. that's it. And there's, like, men in the gallery at the end, but that was about it. And they don't really speak. They're just... Reverse Bechdel test? Two men do not speak to each nope. other. Nope. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but... It was refreshing, to say the least. Yeah. And it was also just such a small cast. Too. In the words of Joe March, played by Sir Sharonin, women. women. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I guess the um the budget of this movie was pretty small. It was like five million, and mm. like uh, which makes sense though. Pretty small cast, pretty yeah. limited filming location. Mm. They were just kind of like on that beach the whole time. I mean, they they wore the same dresses in every fucking scene. Yeah, I was I was thinking about that too. Y'all don't like... have laundry. <laughs> so pr- pregnant Sophie can't do your laundry for your shit. What's she getting paid to do? Great question. Toast I was think- the bread. I was thinking about it because there was that one scene where Heloise was like, "I'm gonna bathe today." <laughs> but <laughs> I think like, she meant like jump in the ocean. Yeah, but I was also like that. Also, like made me think. I was like, "How often do they bathe?" Yeah, probably. You know what I mean? But then, like, how come her hair looks so nice all the yeah. time? Uh-huh. If I don't wash my hair for like a day. These little bangs get so greasy, they fucking stick to my head. <laughs> I just can't We cannot survive in 1770s <laughs> France. Right, do you ever think about, like, things that would kill a Victorian child? <laughs> like, you give a Victorian child a four loco and, like, done. <laughs> but then also I think about myself. If I put myself in that, my immune system would not hold up. I feel like your immune system would be better. Um... Well, right, if you were back in the day. But I'm saying, like, me right now, drop me back 300 <laughs> years. I would be dead in an instant. I would. Yeah, they don't have pasteurized medicine. food. They don't, they don't have medicine they have either. No pa- and their food just comes straight from the source. After mm. one meal, my body would reject. <laughs> I'd be like, "Where are the preservatives?" <laughs> there are no like, GMOs in this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> but. But so, yeah. back in the day, abortions were really interesting. <laughs> I know you said you did a little bit of research to bit see, of like research, the yeah. uh, like the truth to, to this movie? Yeah, I didn't get very... I just read some of the Wikipedia page. <laughs> <laughs> Our favorite scholarly source, Wikipedia. Um, yeah, we're really well informed here. But they... It's really funny because it starts out of her being like, I'm pregnant. And then Marianne is like, do you want to be? And she's like, Absolutely no. not. And she's like, I was waiting for the mistress to leave so I could get this sorted out because like mm-hmm. I didn't want it to be a thing. But she was like, I'm gonna need some help. And then they fucking make her do suicide sprints <laughs> on the beach in like full floor length gap. Whoa, and she's right, she's like, I can't do it. I can't. They're like, 
give us five more. I mean, <laughs> I mean yeah, Marianne is like pushing her forward. <laughs> Eloise doesn't have an ounce of sympathy. She's just standing there watching her run. <laughs> I know, right? It is cold. Ice cold stare. Like I don't give. I don't give a fuck. Give me five more sprints. And she she collapses. She, was, she cla- always would fuck up a track field. <laughs> If she, if she was a high school track coach, she'd be like, I don't give a shit that you have shin splints. Yeah, yeah. No, I would not have survived high school track <laughs> if she was my coach. But basically she, she collapsed and they're like, well, that's it. The baby's gone. And she's like, wait, really? And they're like, no, you have to do a fucking pull up. <laughs> yeah, we, they didn't like show us what was going on, but I think she was dangling from her arms. Like I didn't top. know if it was supposed to look like if it was supposed to be like a fake jump scare <laughs> into us thinking that she had hung herself because you just see her little dangling feet. But then they're like, "Hey, sis, how you, how you doing? You good?" Uh-huh. And she's like, "Yeah." It's. Do you remember those like physical fitness tests you oh had to God, take in yeah. elementary mm-hmm. school where they're like, "You got to run a mile, you got to do yeah. pull ups." You they made you, like, bend down really far. Yeah, on that weird uh-huh. metal grate. Yeah. And you had to, like, see how far you could push your arms. <laughs> that shit was whack. Just make her do that. <laughs> and the and the, the crunching of her midsection will yeet that fetus <laughs> right out of there. Are you kidding? Those did tests they, were Did none of them just, like, punch her in the stomach? <laughs> you know what I mean? Just, like, punching bag yeah. to the gut. It, it'll probably do something. I mean... She, they're also chugging wine every day. In this movie. Yeah, really. Like, I don't know. That's gonna mm-hmm. do something. Yeah. So I have a I have a bit of a um a, a part of the Wikipedia page <laughs> about just some of the the general earlier um, abortion methods, and so a couple of them include physical activities such as strenuous labor, <laughs> climbing, paddling, weightlifting, or diving were common techniques. Um, others included the use of irritant leaves, fasting, bloodletting, pouring hot water onto the abdomen, and lying on a heated coconut shell. Um, yeah. They do They do some plant stuff, too. I think in one of my favorite visual scenes in the movie, they're like... That, this is my favorite. I yeah, think I in the field. Talking. They're yeah. like in this field, and they're all popping up like dingoes. You see, that like, one of them pops up and goes back down. The other two pop up, yeah. and they're looking for, like, some sort of medicinal leaf to, to do the DIY abortion, yeah. because I guess the exercise was not yeah. enough. No, the cinematography was outstanding, and... The, Personally, I'm never really taken by the cinematography in, like, period pieces. I feel like a lot of, like, the dialogue and the plot um, do a lot of the heavy lifting. But and, this... like, costumes and stuff. And yeah. At a certain point, it's just kind of handed to you that it's going to be beautiful. Mm-hmm. If everyone's in a Victorian-era costume yeah, and you're gorgeous. in, like, a beautiful dining mm-hmm. hall with, like, the fucking Sistine Chapel, like, yeah, it's going to look mm-hmm. nice. But this one definitely took me... Um, a bit by surprise in, like, how beautiful it was. There's one scene, too. It's pretty early on in the beginning um, when Marianne is, like, drying out her canvases by the fire. Ah! And she's just, like, sitting in between them, like, in front of the fire, naked, smoking a pipe. And I was like, this is gonna be gorgeous. I wrote down that I have never related to a character more that she she fucking shows up to the function, gets naked, (laughs) smokes a bowl by the fire, then immediately darts to the kitchen and gets some wine rips, and bread rips and into a loaf of bread with her hands and fucking <laughs> with some cheese, some bread. And then, and then Sophie comes in and is like, hey girl, you okay? She goes, where's the wine? <laughs> you feel seen? And I was like, yes. After, after that Washington crossing the Delaware boat oh moment. Oh my God, yeah. She, because what happened was her canvas falls off the boat. She risked it all. Yeah. She jumped right into the big blue. There, like the, there's like, like, I don't know, like, at least five men on the boat with her. Yeah. And they just stare at the canvas as it goes off. Which, like, listen, I am a woman that likes to do a lot of things for herself, but there are certain things <laughs> that I still am, like, I, like, call my dad when my when my car breaks down or something like that, and I'm like, hey, listen, hey, bud, <laughs> can you help a girl out? Well, also, like, like, they were all in pants. She was Fully yeah. in a floor length dress, and she just dives right into the fucking ocean to get that canvas. Yeah. And they are all unbothered. Yeah. They're looking at her like, oh, this is the fifth time this has happened today. Yeah, like, right. Is chivalry dead already? They didn't even try to they didn't even try no. to save her. You know how when somebody gets pulled into a riptide, you're supposed to make a chain to save them? <laughs> they didn't even try to make a chain no. into the water uh-huh. to pull her back yeah. in. That was one of those things I was like, okay, you could be useful. <laughs> A little bit. Yeah, there are five of you on this fucking boat, and it only takes two of you to row, so somebody's got to get that (laughs) canvas. Rock, paper, scissors it. (laughs) But then, so my, like, 
thought, though, mm-hmm. was that does she use the same canvas for the redo of the portrait? Because we get that really beautiful scene of her mm-hmm. painting whatever that sort of, like, brown lacquer stuff yeah. is on the initial canvas. Mm-hmm. And then she, you know, sketches out the outline, and then she eventually paints it, but then she destroys it. Yeah. But then when we see her painting the, you know, the posed yeah. Heloise for the first time. It's, it is what looks like a new canvas. It's a new canvas because there, there was two there because, like I said, in that beginning shot, she's sitting between both canvases while she oh. lets them dry. Yeah, the, so she okay, brought at least two canvases. Okay. I was going to say, she popped the- down to the Hobby Lobby. <laughs> like, girl, why did you risk it all when there's just going to be spares no. to be had? She no, knew she was going to have to redo yeah. it. She just had, <laughs> like, a, like, one of those gut feelings. She's like, I should bring a I spare. Should- <laughs> Uh, mm. I did really like how um there was those scenes sort of sort of in the middle there when Sophie was doing her abortion thing where they're they're very much like a little family. Yes, oh my god, I cute. wrote I wrote a family can simply be two pining lesbians and they're in need adopted of an abortion <laughs> adopted daughter in need of an abortion. So I actually I did a little timeline. Mm-hmm. I know it probably takes place <coughs> Um, I know it probably takes place over more days than I count It's probably for. like two weeks, I think. Yeah, I, I give it like uh, like two weeks and some change. But every yeah. time it seemed like there was a new day, I just wrote what happened during that day mm-hmm. in their relationship. Mm-hmm. And at, at one point I, do, I say they, they do adopt Sophie. but <laughs> You see them sign the papers. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it all happens so fast. <laughs> it's called, like I said, they're U-Hauls. What uh, you so doing? what is, so like day one they meet, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, the, on their second date, Marianne <laughs> says, so, do you think your sister committed suicide? <laughs> and Heloise is like, I'm, I actually am really into the fact that you are so yeah. blunt and honest with me uh-huh. because nobody is, you know, mm-hmm. willing to talk to me A about real turn it. on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just so fucking funny that she's just like, yeah, so the whole thing about your sister, like, falling off a cliff, you think she probably yeah. did that, yeah. right? Like, she definitely <laughs> killed herself, right? Like, I'm not the only one that thinks Heloise that. Heloise is like, well, I just really love your open, honest, and vulnerable nature. <laughs> Um, and so then day three, they basically are like, you are my bestie and my life is incomplete without you. Mm-hmm. This is the scene where um, she tells her, she's like, well, go off on your own today. Like, I don't have to walk oh, with I you love today. This. Yeah. Like, you can go to church and hang out. Yeah. And she was like, in, I felt the freedom you spoke of, but, but I, I also, also felt your absence. absence. Oh, such and a so good So I was line. like, okay, day three, like... My life is incomplete without yeah, you, so yeah. let's just let's just you know agree mm-hmm. on that. <laughs> so then you're like, oh my god, you've known each other yeah. for for three days, yeah. and then day four they have their first small fight. Um, when was that? Which was when she was like, I'm gonna go swimming. Was that then? I feel like there was a, the day where they had um that little piano she... um because that yeah. that was when. Because when they had their fight was when she told her that she was painting. Yeah, yeah. That's but, like, before. Well, and then she's like, yeah. I'm going in the fucking ocean. You yeah. can't stop me. She's like, bitch, can yeah. you even swim? I don't know. We're about to find out. But before that, there was um, this scene where she's Heloise comes in and she's like, yo, you got any tobacco? <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, yeah, give me a minute. And so she gets tobacco and everything. And they, they're chit-chatting and all that stuff. Um, they get on the topic of music and uh, Marianne pretty much goes and plays is the, it the harpsichord. harpsichord? Yeah. She plays it over the covering, which I'm yeah. like, damn, bitch, you don't have to flex so yeah, hard. Right. But that scene I really liked a lot, too, because it was... You think uh, that was a fight? I thought No, that, it wasn't I, a fight, but that just happened uh, before the fight. Yeah, it was like a tense conversation. Yeah. No, not really tense. I think that's when, like, Heloise was like, I would risk it all for this girl. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> like all, she's just staring at her, like reading her entire face while she's playing the harpsichord, and oh. she's like, "Yeah, this is it. I'm. I want to get married, <laughs> <laughs> but not to the Milanese gentleman, no. to this bitch yeah. right here." But th- I feel like that seems. Uh, so important for the setup of the final scene in the movie because mm-hmm. she basically is like, oh, I go to church, not really for God, mm-hmm. but I like music. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, Marianne is like, oh, have mm-hmm. you ever like heard an orchestra? And she's like, no, like basically just church music, which is yeah. like a fucking organ, an organ and some yeah. people singing. And she's like, oh, like it's really beautiful. And mm-hmm. there had been a prior conversation between Marianne and the mother where they both were reminiscing about their experiences they had in Milan. Mm-hmm. And, and she was kind of like, oh, can you convince her yeah. that this life that she's going into is not going to be so bad? Like, she's gonna get to experience so much more culture yeah. and, like, life experiences than being on this fucking island or in a convent. Mm-hmm. And I didn't think it was, like, her trying to persuade Heloise to consider that her impending marriage might not be the worst thing ever. But mm-hmm. basically, she was like, yeah, orchestras, they're pretty cool. Mm-hmm. You know where they got those? Milan. Italy. <laughs> 
Yeah, I really liked that scene too because there's there's sort of two scenes um, that they really kind of bond over each other's interests mm. a bit. So there was this one and then what I consider to be the wackest scene of the movie. Maybe not the wackest, but a, a close second, which is when... Um, this is hours after Sophie has gotten her abortion. <laughs> She's had a really hard day. She's going through it. She's in bed, not mo- like <laughs> yeah. a really, really rough one. They carry her to bed. Yeah, they carry her to bed, and Heloise is like, "I don't want to go to sleep." And then she she decides in that split second, she's like, "Sophie, get your ass up." <laughs> Sophie gets up, and she's like, "We're gonna paint, Sophie. I need listen. I'm trying to bond with my girlfriend right now, and I'm gonna use your drama for it. All right? <laughs> Do you mind?" You do? I don't care. <laughs> and pretty much they... <laughs> they recreate the abortion scene. Yeah, and they're like, parent- Miriam, this is going to be a beautiful thing yeah, for you to paint. paint. it. <laughs> like abortion by candlelight, part two, electric boogaloo. Let's fucking recreate it for, for the sake of art. I mean, well, yeah, what, where was the conversation with Sophie? Being like, hey, do you want to immortalize your trauma on a beautiful painting that we will now reenact? <laughs> <laughs> Only hours after your DIY procedure. Uh, yeah, that that is one of the weirdest. Yeah. <laughs> this is like why and this movie. I think this movie is fucking funny. I would like <laughs> like it's not supposed to be, mm-hmm. but there are just times when things happen. Like when she yeets herself into the ocean to get that canvas. I fucking chuckled. <laughs> when, mm-hmm. Yeah, there are just times where it's like a little bit absurd and kind of yeah. ridiculous and and truly. Mm-hmm. It, about the events that transpires, not much happens. Yeah. It's just, like, yeah. a bunch of ladies just vibing. Uh-huh. I don't know. But so, like, through the dialogue and through, like, the weird little nuance things that happens, like her tearing into some bread with her hands, why is that funny to me? I don't know. I think the one thing that was really funny and also what I think is the step higher on the whack scale for this movie is there's this one scene, they've pretty much just tripped. Right? <gasps> oh my god, they do DMT! <laughs> That's I have that! I say, day seven, do DMT together! <laughs> Yeah, they're tripping sack, right? <laughs> She's like, I bought this stuff from some witch at the market. She said it's gonna make time completely stop. Do you want to do it with me? Yeah. Do you want to finger blast my armpit? That was so smart, though, the way, like, cinematically it was done. <laughs> is it a vagina or is it an armpit? Let's pan yeah. out a little. Don't well, because well, the whole thing about this movie is they don't show any sex, which is great because so many different lesbian films do that and exploit. <laughs> it was the warmest car. <clears throat> exactly. Sorry, I just had yeah. a bit of a tickle in my throat there. <laughs> For a like, movie we yeah. won't be covering. No, this never. Um, but so, like, it really, like, exploitive of, like, sort of the actresses and just, like, lesbians yeah. in general, and it's just not great. Um, but it's not like this movie is G-rated because they fully show vagina. Yeah, they show yeah. full female nudity vagine. many times throughout this movie. I would say it's, how many. Do you know that, that scene where she's like, "Shit, I got my period," and she's in bed like and her, one time, her pussy's though. just out, just fully out. And I'm like, "Is that?" And then I was just like, "Yeah, it is." And then she's like diddling that's down like the there. One, I think that's the one time they show. Maybe. I guess, and then there's one where the mirror is covering it, which is, like, not full. Yeah, but, they, no. but they are naked for a Yeah, there's, there's nudity, yeah. but there's no sex, which I think is really important. Yeah. Um, and so the way that uh, the director, Celine, I don't know how to say her last name, I'm gonna butcher it. S- nope, I'm not gonna try. <laughs> I felt brave and then I didn't. Um, but she, the way she did it was incredibly smart, and I really enjoyed it. Um... But anyways, after the, <laughs> after they trip, back to, um... S-C-I-A-M-M-A, Skiama? Skiama? I don't know, I sound sorry. like a dumb fucking American. Celine Skiama? <laughs> from fucking northern Milwaukee? Yeah, really. Um, I'm sorry, French, <laughs> French listeners. Yeah, we're really sorry. We, <laughs> we know we're bad. Um, but anyway, so they, they trip. Eloise's eyes are the size of marbles. <laughs> And then yeah, uh-huh. uh, Marianne is like, "Bro, you're fucking eyeballs right now." <laughs> Holy shit! Yeah, Halloween is like these visuals are crazy. <laughs> I'm gonna need. Oh, where's my fucking canvas? <laughs> Fuck! I use both of them. <laughs> but so after that, um, Marianne Marianne's gone to get water and everything like that. And I didn't realize this until like maybe the second time I watched it with you is that she baby birds the water into yeah! Halloween's <laughs> mouth. 
<laughs> like how Louise is still too out of it to drink. And she fully goes, takes a sip of water, and spits it into her mouth. Yes, yeah, because she's like, no, I'm too tired. I'm on DMT. I'm meeting God right now. No. And she's like, you, do you have ever have a friend who they're so drunk and they're so inebriated and you're trying to take care of them, but they're being kind of, uh, like, they're resisting your yeah. help? And so you're yeah. like, you need to drink water. And they're like, no. She, she, yeah, she fucking spits it into her mouth. She's like, you need to hydrate. We have things to do tomorrow. <laughs> that caught me so off guard. Like, more because I didn't realize it the first time I watched it. I was very, like, absorbed into the movie. Yeah. I wasn't thinking about the details. But then, like, seeing that, and every time I've watched it since seeing that, that's one of those <laughs> ones that just makes me cackle. Um, like, damn, that's intimate. <laughs> But so day six, they do a joint philosophy lecture <laughs> about fucking, what is it, like, Orpheus and his wife. Oh, yeah, Euripides. Yeah, um, whatever. The, the, the <coughs> old, like, is it, like, mythology? I don't know. Yeah. Like, the tale of, like, yeah. his wife dies mm-hmm. and goes to hell and they're like, you can go get her. Which is very you, important. Yeah, they're like, but you the can't movie. look at her, so you gotta, like, that whole story about mm-hmm. he can't turn around to look at his wife and they have to get out together and at the very last second he, he looks, turns to yeah. look and then she gets pulled away from him mm-hmm. and like that's the whole thing but then they all have this kind of like intellectual debate, debate yeah. about like whether what he did was mm-hmm. right or wrong or like what his motives were mm-hmm. and i'm like damn okay yeah like it's your third date you're like let's question um mm-hmm. philosophic morals yeah. i really gotta get on the same page i gotta make sure it's like you mm-hmm. your criteria for dating somebody <laughs> You know, like, yeah. you know, must be a Taurus, mm-hmm. must, you know, hold the same values about yeah. this one specific uh-huh. uh, mythological story. It's, I can't mm-hmm. budge on that. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I draw the line. He needs to yeah. love Twilight. Like, yeah. those are the big three. <laughs> Was it the day after this, though, that um, they play probably my favorite card game, Egyptian yes! Rat Screw? Yeah, I, I call it Egyptian Rat Tail. I know there's like a million different names uh-huh. for it, but I remember you, me, and my mom played this in in when we were on mm-hmm. vacation to we to, went to Cooperstown which is like the baseball capital of America cuz my younger brother like was playing yeah. baseball or whatever my parents were like you can bring a friend cuz we know you don't give a shit about sports so I brought Emily uh-huh. basically we're in this farmhouse where there are all these sheep in the field next to us but we did nothing all day and then when my parents would get home we'd be like ah finally social interaction we would play that game and you basically like throw down cards really fast and you have to slap them uh-huh. to like if you get if there are doubles or they're like a bunch or, of like goals. sandwich or something yeah, like that yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love it because it's violent. Yeah, there's a ton of different ways to do it, too. Like, mm-hmm. I played it kind of recently with someone, and they were like, no, I do it like this. I'm like, fuck, I can't, yeah. I can't pivot. Yeah, I can't, yeah, I've got it in my head. Yeah. I, we no. did it at camp a lot, and it got, like, so violent, like, people's hands would bleed. Oh like, God. Well, like, it was, like, intense. Yeah. And if you were good at a uh-huh. rat tail, like, you were fucking in there. And so it, the, the slapping was aggressive. Yeah. Yeah, no, I really, I pussy, that's but. great game, though. Outstanding game. <laughs> that's, like, I I think that's a good one to bond over. Like, as yeah. much as I love Uno, <laughs> I would rather play Egyptian Rat Tail on my date. Well, it's like date three, right? Date two, debate philosophy. Date three, cards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, date gotta, one. Gotta switch it up. Date one, walk on the beach, talk about your dead sister. <laughs> date two, our new adoptive daughter. Let's indoctrinate her into the world of ethical philosophy. <laughs> Date three, wine and cards. <laughs> date four, get an abortion. <laughs> date, date four, bring our now adoptive daughter to the local Planned Parenthood, mm-hmm. which is also just some yeah. lady's cottage. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> date five, do DMT. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was, um, in between that though, it's the, we haven't talked about the bonfire. The fact, yeah, all. so it's their first outing as a couple. Mm-hmm. They're not like, they, I would say they are gal pals at this point, yeah. but they... They haven't they put a label on it. Yeah, but it's their first outing uh-huh. together, just mm-hmm. a little something-something. Yeah, the bees. It's also no men here, just all the ladies, all the local ladies yeah. just having a bonfire, just singing. Can I just say that I would love to go to this function? Like, Me fucking I want to be there. I want to be drinking wine out of the bottle, <laughs> around a bonfire... <laughs> Buying Just drugs and doing acapella. Right now that we're all vaxxed, me and the gals, you're gonna catch us harmonizing the fuck around the bonfire. <laughs> <laughs> it's all I want to do. That's all. Yeah. That's the summer, hot girl mm. summer, 2021. <laughs> harmonize around the bonfire. It, it starts out slow, like one of them's like, oh. yeah. 
and they all just they drew it's like one a big note. drone one, into it. One note. Yeah. It's it's like the um what's the theme song? The the THX at the beginning of every Pixar movie. It's like boom. Oh yeah yeah yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Now, that's what yeah. was happening. The di- the director wrote this song for the movie though, which it's I thought was note. very interesting. There's lyrics. <laughs> And clapping. She's like, you're all going to sing the same note at the same time. I wrote this myself. <laughs> I think It's most, kind of a banger. One of the most interesting things about this movie, though, is that it has no score. Yeah. There's never any background music mm-hmm. or score happening. Mm-hmm. And I, it's, the director talked a lot about how she just wanted you to focus on what was visually mm-hmm. happening, their subtle movements, their yeah. interactions. Like, she didn't want anything to distract from it. Mm-hmm. But it, I think it also makes the time when there is music... Like, Stand so out. much more yeah. impactful, like, the yeah. singing, and then the scene at the end, where you don't breathe for three minutes, because yeah, it's so fucking much. beautiful. Uh-huh. Like, I, I think that by excluding music, it... It did a lot. Yeah. Which a lot of um, movies don't do. Oh, also, this movie is written and directed by a queer woman, so that's cool. Yeah. Her, her and Adele, like, dated. Yes, yeah. yeah. It was an amicable split. That as nice. all lesbians have, they're like, we'll still be best friends, but, like, yeah. it's not for yeah. us. Like, I saw a photo of, like, St. Vincent, like, the other day, and it was, like, her hours beforehand, like, hanging out with Cara Delevingne, her ex, and, and then, then, like, Kristen going... And then Stewart. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. Jen's oh, hi, here. Jen. Jen's here for chocolate or vanilla. <laughs> Am I, like, interrupting at a bad time? Oh, no, no this no, is no, a perfect no. time. We're just talking about how all lesbians are friends with their exes. Mm-hmm. Is that true? <laughs> Yes. Pretty, pretty well, true, yeah. It's a stereotype. I'd say like 90% of the time it <laughs> kind of ends that way. That's it, lovely. An amicable split. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Jen's going to hit us with some chocolate or vanilla. Does this one have a theme? It does. Okay. So, uh, um, famous movie couples? Movie couples! Ooh, this is good. I like <laughs> uh, this. We were just talking about the couple that, I mean, pretty much created this film. Yeah. 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 IRL. Came in at a great time. I wonder if there was any jealousy. I bet not. I wonder if... I wonder if... Because I know they said that the Heloise character is very much based on her as an actress. Mm, like, like, I can see that. Like, she's, like, she's very much like that. So, like, she wrote yeah. that with her in mind, obviously. Yeah. So, I mm-hmm. wonder how much of their actual, like, experiences. Mm-hmm. Anyways, mm-hmm. chocolate or vanilla? It's a game we play on the podcast where Jen, my mom, and our unpaid intern comes in and gives us two options. And we have to say which one we like better. Mm-hmm. Okay. You ready? Yes. Um, chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate. Vanilla. Chocolate. Um, Molly and Sam from Ghost or Johnny and Baby from Dirty Dancing? Oh my god, Johnny Molly, and Baby. <laughs> Molly and Sam. <laughs> Molly and Sam. I love Dirty Dancing, I can't. <laughs> um, Jack and Rose from Titanic or Jack and Ennis from Brokeback Mountain? Jack and fucking Ennis from yeah, Brokeback Mountain. Yep. Titanic doesn't hold a fucking candle to what yep. they had. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That is that is a three day boat love story versus a lifetime of yearning. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right, I'll say Jack and Ennis too. <laughs> <laughs> um, Rhett and Scarlet from Gone with the Wind or Ilsa and Rick from Casablanca? Uh, I guess Gone with the Wind. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's like more iconic. I don't know. Yeah. I'll say, I'll say Gone with the Wind also. Uh, Danny and Sandy from Greece or Troy and Gabriella from High School Musical? Oh, Troy and Gabriella. Yeah. Troy and Gabriella mm-hmm. all the way. At least they were like somewhat age appropriate for each other. Yeah. I think, no, Olivia Newton-John and John Travolta are totally age-appropriate. Well, I just mean everybody in that movie looked like they were 45 because they were. Yeah. That's Whereas they in were high school, for at movie. least in high school yeah. musical, they were in their 20s, yeah. not I'll their I'll still 50s. go with OG, Danny and Sandy. Uh, Patrick and Kat from 10 Things I Hate About You or Sharon Josh from Clueless? Uh, I gotta go with 10 Things I Hate About You. Yeah. Love a Heath Ledger moment. Same. Yeah, I love 10 Things I Hate About You. Those are both based on, like, Shakespeare. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Shakespeare, yeah. Taming of the Shrew. And Emma. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Uh, MJ and Spider-Man, the Kirsten Dunst, Tobey Maguire version, mm-hmm. or MJ and Spider-Man, the Zendaya, Tom Holland version? Okay. OG. This is really hard. <laughs> she put you in a tough place. This is really tough. Because I don't like the Kirsten Dunst MJ. And I think Toby's better off without her. And I just don't get it. He's always risking it all for her, and she doesn't even... She's, like, constantly like, oh, I'm gonna go fucking hang out with James Franco, because mm. he got a concussion. <laughs> I don't I don't like it. I just don't... It's a little shy to me. Whereas Zendaya, her MJ, perfect. Cinnamon roll, mm. angel, I wouldn't change a thing. But... They didn't even, they don't, I wouldn't even say they have a blossoming romance. Mm. Yes, they do. He buys her a necklace. Yeah, 
because he has a crush on her and then he gives her the necklace and she's like okay we'll date and then that was the end we don't even really see if they're a good couple or not they're friends i guess i'll go with them though okay i'm gonna go with um tom and Zendaya. uh edward and bella or alice and jasper alice and jasper <laughs> Both of them are so fucked up. Yeah. Because she is like a fuck. She like voted for Jill Stein and he's a confederate, <laughs> yeah. ex confederate soldier. I just like Alice more than I like both Edward and Bella That's combined. True. So I, I think that Rosalie and, and Emmett, Emmett yeah. are, is the best couple. Yeah, I think you're right. And, that, and, and I like Carlisle and Esme. I think yeah. they're a good couple too. <laughs> I think you, you chose arguably the two worst couples. That's what um, makes it so difficult. That's what makes the game good. I'm actually team Jacob and Renesme. <laughs> that's that's the, what I think is the best couple. Uh-huh. A wolf also, and a baby. Kind of weird. <laughs> a different thing going on there. Um, I'll say Alice and Jasper too. Uh, Wesley and Wesley and Buttercup or Aladdin and Jasmine from live action Aladdin. Oh, Wesley and Buttercup. We had a weird instance pretty recently where we both watched mm. Princess oh, Bride yeah. like within days of each yeah. other and not on purpose. Uh-huh. Yeah, Wesley and Buttercup. There's She's something about one, that though. tiny little mustache. She's another one though that I'm like you're constantly putting your life mm. on the line. For this girl who used to just call you farm boy. Right. Like, and all of a sudden she's like, one day she's like, oh no, he actually isn't that bad. Let's mm-hmm. kiss. But then he has to leave. And then yeah. he just is constantly risking his life for her. What has she ever done? She's never, she doesn't show any redeeming qualities. Her name is just Buttercup and she's <laughs> blonde. But I still will pick them. Uh, I will pick them too. Uh, Katniss and Peta from Hunger Games or Thomas and Teresa from Maze Runner? Katniss and Peta. Yeah, okay. Katniss yeah. and Peta. It's a Katniss and Peta too. I the always, trauma bonding. I always tried to be like edgy and I was like, I'm team Gail, mm-hmm. but I just think I don't like blonde adults. So <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I went with the with the brunette option. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um Gus and Hazel from Fault in Our Stars or Triss and Four from Divergent. Oh. Ugh. <laughs> Oh, that's hard. That's really hard. I guess I was a Tiffios stan to the grave when I was in middle school. I, like, when... It, I'm so glad they don't let underage people get tattoos, because I would have the word okay in a, in a cloud <laughs> on my body somewhere. And um, just thank God that that never happened. Uh-huh. Um, so I guess I'll go with that. I, I, retroactively, I do understand mm-hmm. that that book is pretty weird yeah. and, like, not that good. See, on the opposite end, I'm going to go with the Divergent pair because mm-hmm. I did really enjoy the books um, when I was a wee one. Shailene Woodley. She had a huge moment. She's just never not the secret life of an American teenager to me where she's, like, pregnant. That was her best role. Yeah, that's... <laughs> That was, she peaked. And then after that, I was always like, ah, you're just, like, pregnant. You're just, like, 16 and pregnant to me. I don't know. I just can't, yeah. couldn't shake that. And the swoopy yeah. side bangs. Yeah. yeah, I couldn't get that image out of my what head. What about you? Who do you I go with? Tristan for. Mm. I would also say when she kisses somebody on screen, she has a signature. Like, she puts her thumb, like, on their, right on their lips. <laughs> Watch. So she doesn't have to really do it. I know. Like, yeah. she does, like, a weird That's like that prank you play with people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, that's all. Oh, nice. thanks, Jack. Thanks. That was a good one. That was really tough. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Would you awesome. say you have a favorite movie couple of all time? I ask this also not have been giving it any thought. <laughs> These two. The, preparation. The, the, <laughs> yeah. The movie we're talking about. <laughs> two weeks and I am ready to officiate the wedding. Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever have a movie where you like desperately want them to get together? I feel that more way about TV shows because you mm. get more of like yeah. the long, yeah. like the slow burn, mm-hmm. like will they, won't they kind of thing. Whereas a movie, it's pretty much like it's going to happen or it's not going to yeah. happen. You're not going to, you know, string me along mm-hmm. yeah. for more than two hours. Yeah. Um, I also have a lot of couples that I fucking hate. <laughs> I'm like, who thought that was okay? Because uh-huh. it's not. <laughs> like... I don't know, off the dome. Yeah. I'll, Alice I'll and come, Jasper. Yeah, I'll come back to you. I'll come back to you with that one. But do you ever just like like there's like zero chemistry and you're like, Ugh. like this just doesn't do it. For yeah, doesn't yeah, it's definitely my all of them. Awesome. All right, that well, thank it. you. Thanks. Enjoy Thanks. the rest of your podcast. Back to the lesbians. Yeah, <laughs> if you want to um, help support our podcast so we can pay Jen, please buy our merch. Yeah, we're in the process of figuring out shirts and some other things and yeah. maybe some hats. Yeah, just uh, buy your stuff. Uh, also, Please. <laughs> also, personally, I'd like to keep this podcast as ad free as possible for as long yeah. as possible. I don't really want to be a sellout. So, if you want to show your love to the pod, mm-hmm. buy some shit from my Etsy, buy some shit from our website. Mm-hmm. 
treat yourself to a fucking sticker. Everything helps. Um, Mm -hmm. Not that we're in the running. (laughs) Not that Casper Mattress is at our doorstep, Mm. really. Not that HelloFresh has yet to send me a free sample. I'm waiting for Adam and Eve to sponsor us. Oh, my God. Come on, we have a bit for Fuck, Mary Kill. Right, Balesa. Balesa just paired with BuzzFeed to come out with a line of sex toys. Mm, With BuzzFeed? Yeah, it's called, like, the BuzzFeed Air Vibe. I I hate that. Yeah, but but do it. Make a swamp Yeah, come on. Hey. Swamp Kegel Balls. (laughs) Just, uh, just sit on it. Let me know. Get, get back to yeah. me about it. Um, <laughs> um, but they go to the fire, and Heloise does not know how to stop, drop, and roll. Her dress catches <laughs> I don't on fire. Think she wanted to. <laughs> Her dress catches on fire. And she's kind of like she looked down at it. Like, she's like, "This is oh. kind of hot, huh?" Yeah. She's like, "This is kind of like." sexy and mysterious of me uh-huh. and yeah. marianne Ooh, is like oh my god what won't i do i have, I have never been more in love mm-hmm. than yeah. this bitch who is ready to mm-hmm. burn her ankles yeah. for the sake of the the, the instagram pic yeah no, <laughs> she's, she's there for the... run over and they're like what what the, what the fuck we gotta put this fire Eloise is fully there for the drama of it, <laughs> and i love that she's there to put on a show um but yeah, then they have their first kiss um, following yeah. the bomb So they, they go out on the beach again, because that's all they fucking do. That's yeah. the only uh-huh. source of entertainment is to go look at the ocean. So they're on the beach, as per usual. And they their ki- first kiss is kind of tense. Yeah. It's like a tense... Like it's, well, the, the build for it has been, like, weeks in the yeah. making. <laughs> well, so I don't blame them. Like, I'm gonna say, like, eight days. Yeah. Eight or nine days. I don't know. <laughs> a tense first kiss, but then Heloise fucking books it. She's yeah. like... Well, uh, this is uh, more than I bargained uh-huh. for. And she, Which, like, she's the one that sort of like initiated it. She's yeah. like, "Ooh, you gonna follow me into this cave? <laughs> what are we gonna do in here? <laughs> Look and at me she... all alone over in this cave. Yeah. It'd be a shame if somebody came over here and I don't know, Kiss kissed me." me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then she's out of there in a second, and then she she completely ghosts Sophie and Marianne for dinner. Yeah. Uh-huh. Their their regular dinner plans where they just have yeah. some nice philosophical chats, mm-hmm. play some cards. She. would no shows. Mm-hmm. And Marianne's like, holy fuck, I've ruined it all. Uh-huh. My gayness has yeah. scared her. Yeah. The panic. <laughs> the gay, true gay panic. But then she like goes into her room and she's like, hey. I they have a fireside wanna... chat. Yeah, she's like, I just want to talk about my feelings. And mm-hmm. I thought you could also talk about your feelings so we could both be like really open, vulnerable, and honest about how we're feeling about this situation. And she's like, oh my god, I would love that. <laughs> and so they just like really just speak mm-hmm. their truths yeah. and have a that really nice open communication. Yeah. Which is probably like the, the best scene of the film if you ask me well then they immediately are like all right so we're on the same page let's fuck yeah was this okay because you texted me and you said hey let's find two quotes that you p- pick a quote and i'll pick a quote mm-hmm. and um we'll see if we have like a similar one or the same one because the quote i pick, i want to hear yours because mine was the one probably like the best like line from this was the whole thing of she had this line of you dreamt of me? It's like, oh, no, I thought, I thought of, of you. you. Oh, that Which is... Which just ripped my heart out and then yes. crushed it and then sewed it back together and put it back in. Then put it in a blender <laughs> and then seasoned it with a little onion and garlic, roasted it, fried it, put it back in, <laughs> ate it, shat it out, the whole process. No, I... There, there are, like, certainly a handful of lines from this movie mm-hmm. that just, like, that do that. That really, like, <laughs> yeah. stick it in your fucking heart. Uh-huh. I, I picked the, um, in solitude, I felt the liberty you spoke of. That was my second choice, absence. yeah. That's, that was the first time when I was like, oh, this movie is gonna make me feel things. <laughs> and, like, that's yeah. the one that I found myself thinking of the most, mm-hmm. like, after watching yeah. the film. Like, oh my god. Well, it's so if, true. If it's, someone said that to you, like, I would go into a full tailspin of someone that said that to me. <laughs> yeah, right? I don't even... I, I'd be like, Are you good, bro? Yeah, really. <laughs> People don't talk like that. Uh-huh. But yeah, I, I think that I dropped of you, know, I thought of you is also one of yeah. like, same... Uh-huh. I think those are of the of the best quotes yeah. from this movie. But sure. also, it w- this is also one that's in the fireside chat, and um, Heloise saying, do all lovers feel that they're inventing, <gasps> inventing something? something? Oh. Jeez, chills. I got chills, man. Oh, yeah, no, the writing in this is outstanding. It's so, also, so good. Also, one of my favorite, like, mic drop moments was when Heloise sees the paint, the first painting for the first mm-hmm. time, 
And she's like saying, she's like, this isn't me. This is yeah. bad. And then Marianne says, I, I didn't know, know you were an art critic. critic. And then she says, I, I didn't, didn't know, know you were a painter. painter. Oh, yeah. that was, I was like, oh, mm. we are here to fucking battle it out mm-hmm. today. I, yeah, I, in their, their like dynamic and their chemistry is so believable to mm-hmm. me because I feel maybe it's implied that they're both very like sharp and very mm-hmm. fast and maybe Heloise kind of has struggled with like not relating to other people mm-hmm. very well. Yeah. Um, cause you kind of get that. She's like, oh, people aren't usually so like upfront with me about yeah. like emotional topics mm-hmm. or stuff like that. So I feel like even though this is a two week romance, a couple days in, I'm like, nah, I believe it. Yeah. They're vibing. Yeah. They've got good yeah. vibes. They're like that soulmate level type thing. Mm. Yeah. But I guess it also is in like a very heightened, uh, like dramatic situation. Mm-hmm. Like I'm painting your picture so you can go get married to a stranger mm-hmm. in two weeks. Like obviously you're going to be kind of fucking emotional yeah. and like. I don't know, more susceptible to, like, feeling stronger emotions. It's like when people are in plane crashes together and then they fall in love Mm -hmm. because you, like, mistake trauma for, like, other... A bond. Yeah, Yeah. like, other things. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's totally a thing. Not to say that their love isn't real, but I think you can kind of substitute other emotions you don't want to be feeling with good ones. Mm -hmm. Um, Well, yeah, I mean, one of the most, like, emotionally charged scenes was their big fight when they had finished the painting, Mm -hmm. the second painting, and then right after, which is Marianne running to Heloise on the beach, and just they're just crying into each other's arms. Basically, she's like, we have another day together, let's not spend it, like, fucking being pissed. Uh Uh-huh. Um. But I I always, um, not always, but a lot of the times I'll find myself sort of judging, um, an actor or an actress off of, like, how well they cry, because oh. it seems like something really hard to do. Yeah. Like, I could not sob on command. I always think about that, like, while I'm crying. Uh-huh. I'm like, if I was an actress, mm-hmm. I would run to the studio. You know? I'd be like, <laughs> we gotta get this. <laughs> Come on, I'm in a really bad place yeah. right now. Get the cameras rolling. <laughs> that is true. Yeah, a bad a bad crier yeah. is like, it, it's the same mm-hmm. thing like bad chemistry. Like, you know when two people are kissing and mm-hmm. you're like, oh, I can really tell you're just doing mm-hmm. that because you're being forced to. Mm-hmm. Like, the same yeah. thing with crying. Like, it's so cringy yeah. to watch a bad Well, these cry. two are outstanding criers and they have outstanding chemistry. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, no, w- were any awards given to these lovely ladies? I because... think... Adele won something at Cannes, and I think the film itself won something at Cannes, but I don't think it won much other than that. Uh. I remember it was nominated for um, Best Foreign Film at the Oscars, mm-hmm. but it got beat by Parasite. Yeah, which is which understandable, also unfortunately. Won for- for best picture. So like obviously if it was gonna win best picture, it's also yeah. gonna win best foreign mm-hmm. film. I this year they changed it to international film. It's because of Min- of Minari. At the Golden Globes, right? Because they're like it's literally an American movie yeah. that just happened to be mm-hmm. Korean during some of it. Yeah, which yeah. is really interesting. Not the point though. Also, I I challenge you if you're the type of person who doesn't think you have it in you to watch like foreign films because mm-hmm. of the attention level it mm-hmm. takes to read subtitles that much i found i i'm not gonna say i ever fully felt like that but i like, kind of got it i'm like you know you really have to be fucking paying yeah. attention to every word that's you have yeah. to basically read mm-hmm. and i watch everything with subtitles but when it's you know when it's in a language you know you can kind mm-hmm. of like half pay attention yeah. to both uh, but I, I think like this one is a really good place to start because mm-hmm. not much is happening on the screen it's not like an action film it's not like your yeah. eyes are gonna be fucking darting everywhere mm-hmm. trying to keep track of what's happening it's just mostly like people having conversations yeah so i think if you're a foreign film newbie, newbie like this would be like such an easy mm-hmm. stepping stone into like trying to get into it yeah i think that's a you're so right with mm-hmm. that yeah what did you drink for this I, so I watched this movie at like 11 in the morning and I honestly thought about having some lunch wine because that first scene mm-hmm. when she ripped into that bread, I was like, oh shit. Because I immediately was like, bread and cheese and wine right out the bottle. Yeah. Perfect. Because that's they eat that like the whole time during mm-hmm. this movie. But I think I made myself pierogies. Ooh. Pierogies from the box. And I think I just had water yeah. or something. Not very exciting. Mm. I, I had leftover pizza and... <laughs> Sangria. (laughs) 
<laughs> not quite the mm-hmm. uh, glamorous high no, front. No. But I totally think you could do like a like a rustic cheese plate. I just put out a whole fucking loaf. We're always back to this. Right? But just like put out a loaf. At one point uh-huh. she's got a block of cheese with just the knife fucking yeah. stuck in the yeah. top. Mm-hmm. Like just I think if breaks. you're with people, you each bring one cheese. You bring a whole block for yourself. <laughs> yeah, and you and you uh-huh. and a loaf of bread uh-huh. for yourself. And you just as well. eat the entire thing over the course of the movie and you drink wine. You just guzzle a bag yeah. yet by yourself. <laughs> yeah, definitely wine is the move. Red wine, probably, but if you're not that type of person, I understand. If you're like me and you have bird, <laughs> boy, do I have the product for you. Tums. <laughs> Now paired I, with the swamp. I can't live without Tums, honestly. Oh my god. I made red sauce, like, from scratch for the first time in my life the oh, other nice. day, and it came out really good, but I was like, I had to pop, like, yeah. six Tums, because mm-hmm. I was like, the heartburn. Yeah, I went to a, um, me and my roommates treated ourselves to, like, a fancy dinner Ooh. last night, because we all graduated. Um, oh, congrats, by the way. Oh, congrats to you! <laughs> Thanks. Congrats to anyone out there who is finished school. Mm-hmm. Or anything like that. I this is the general yeah. time when people are celebrating mm-hmm. those sorts of achievements. So hey, yeah. good for you. But I got home after this dinner and I literally I ran to my room to for, for Tom's. Tom's. <laughs> it was some of the best food I've ever had in my life. But I, I, keep I, a little I travel. I know. I, I keep was travel thinking Tom's. Yeah. I would really regret it not bringing my travel Tom's <laughs> with me. <laughs> it's really bad. Um. <laughs> How old do you think we sound to our listeners? We're fully 22 years old. I know. And I'm like, I can't go anywhere without my thumbs. <laughs> no, we're like really 22, but the, which I think I'm like young, hip, fresh, and fun. <laughs> but like, I'm sure to a 16 year old, they're like these fucking old crotchety <laughs> hags. <laughs> and no opinion ass having, not woke. Yeah. Acid reflux ass fucking bitches. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then anyone older than us is like who let gen z watch star wars oh my god yeah <laughs> yeah i loved um we created some discourse on the timeline well if, i think anything having to do with star wars people are gonna be like very mm-hmm. polarized yeah. by it because i think it's just a thing people love to like have arguments <laughs> about yeah um and i I didn't really think it was a hot take saying that fucking Darth Vader is a fascist. fascist. But apparently it was. <laughs> Everyone's like, um, actually, I will not tolerate Padme slander. And I'm like, actually, I'm trying to slander Anakin here, but uh-huh. but I yeah. get it. But if you don't follow us on TikTok already, follow us on TikTok at The Swamp Podcast. Yes, I fucking <laughs> love every single person who comments anything. <laughs> I read them all. Like, I swear, I read every <laughs> single comment. And they, like, we fully will text each other yeah anytime somebody says something nice or funny or like literally anything we're fucking screenshotting it sending each other like oh my god did you see the tiktok oh my god did you see on instagram so just know that like your shit fully makes our days sometimes like it's just the serotonin boost that i get from a nice dm from somebody even just somebody being like hey i like the pod great job Mm -hmm. i'm recommending you know xyz movie for you to watch i'm like oh my god i'm like curled up in the fetal position trying not to cry because yeah. I'm so happy. <laughs> I want to I shout out this girl, Gabby, who literally made, yes, she made a TikTok, a TikTok. Um, to tell us that she felt really seen when we were talking about 16-year-old they, they them lesbians. Yeah. We see you and thank you so yeah, much she, for taking the time to make a full TikTok yes, for us. Oh my god. We love all of you. Dara and, and I were literally like texting at the same time right when we saw it. We're like, like, oh my god. <laughs> but it's in this month especially, out to all you LGBTQIA mm-hmm. listeners out there, we just... We couldn't not do a Pride yeah. Month. Mm-hmm. It, it just had to happen. And mm-hmm. so, uh, special... Thank you for listening. Yeah, yes. and this month, I hope this month is full of joy, love. love good. I hope you find a dollar on the street. <laughs> I hope uh, good energy comes Surrounds your way. Surrounds you, yeah. Because mm-hmm. um, I know, I think a lot of Pride events probably still aren't happening. Mm-hmm. So I think people probably can't yeah. um, like celebrate in the way mm-hmm. that... They want to, even though I think some, some like smaller things, but still COVID getting us down. But someday soon we will have an alligator shaped float in New York City Pride Uh for the swamp in 2057 when we're both old old. (laughs) and wrinkly. Oh, also, I feel like I've never uh, like verbally explained our little logo. So Emily is the frog Mm -hmm. and I'm the alligator. And because I texted Emily and I was like, okay, which one do you feel more attached 
to as your spirit a frog mm-hmm. or an alligator and in my head I was like oh I hope she doesn't pick the alligator because I really want the alligator <laughs> and then she was like oh I'm totally the frog and I was like thank god and so then I found on your Instagram a picture where you were wearing this cool sweater so I put the frog in the mm. sweater and then I put the alligator in my glasses and some earrings mm-hmm. so yeah so that's I think we look really cute I would prefer to be in that body than this body honestly. <laughs> I would prefer to be a frog just vibing on a couch yeah um, watching movies yeah that would yeah. be the dream mm-hmm. the dream life <laughs> <laughs> i'm like gonna have body dysmorphia i'm gonna be like oh my god i was meant to be an alligator <laughs> fuck <laughs> if only i had scales <laughs> <laughs> uh, fuck mary kill is pretty basically i think you we have the two protagonists we have sophie, sophie. It, who is She's over 18, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. She's, yeah. She presents younger than the women, but she's not, yeah. like, a minor, I no. don't think. And then there's the mom. Yeah. And I think... Kind of a MILF, I won't lie. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I, was, I was like, your portrait, I would be convinced. If I was the king, <laughs> yeah. I yeah. would be convinced. But then I think, other than that, we basically have no, like, named characters yeah. who have any significant <laughs> amount <laughs> of dialogue or presence in the movie. <laughs> um, so, we, I mean... We could, like, infer some things, but I guess... So, fuck Mary... I just guess for everyone, because it's four rather yeah, than Yeah, yeah. If we're gonna divide it out, we just yeah. have to kick somebody out. So, yeah. I guess... Oh, this is so hard. This is so hard, because I don't want to get in the middle of their relationship, you know? Can I just join the family? The trouble, right? <laughs> I'm not even in a romantic way. I yeah. just want to hang out. I'll be, like, um... Like, I'll prepare the cheese board. Nice. And, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. and the board games. I'll be mm-hmm. like, I brought Catan tonight. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a nice, a nice red. I some gouda. Some gouda. <laughs> Scrabble. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> I just think it'd be really nice to vibe with them and Sophie. Yeah. Yeah, true. I guess I'd rather pair off with Sophie because I don't want to get in the middle. Right, and then we could be like, like, couples who are friends. Yeah. And double date. Uh-huh. I feel like I could also get down. Which is just any, like, group of lesbians. Like, in a friend group. The sister. Everyone dates each other. The sister just... who, like, offed herself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Maybe if she was betrothed to me, things wouldn't have been so bad. Because yeah. I am not a, a rich man from Milan. Mm-mm. So I don't have much to offer mm-hmm. in the ways of a dowry. Um, <laughs> oh my god, wait. Can we talk though for a second about basically the first interaction scene we get between them is that Marianne has to take Heloise out on her daily mm-hmm. walk. And, and Heloise starts, books She it. starts fucking sprinting towards the cliff and... <clears throat> At this point, the only thing she knows about this family is that the sister recently committed suicide yeah. by jumping off yeah. the cliff. And so, and so she really gave her the scare of her life. She's like, oh, you know, it's gonna be a really fucking sick prank. She's like, I'm gonna pretend that I'm about to kill myself. And she's like, and that's really gonna gauge uh, how this relationship goes. Yeah. Uh-huh. I just thought that, I was like, what? why the fuck? Why the fuck did you think yeah. that was an okay mm-hmm. thing to do? And then she was like, oh, I love to run. Or mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah. Um, she's like, I've dreamt of that for ages. And she's like, dying? She's like, no, I'm running. running. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, she could fuck up the track field. <laughs> she probably did like 400 hurdles. I guess I would do DMT and finger at Heloise's armpit. <laughs> but I would not spit into her mouth like a baby bird. That is where I draw the line. <laughs> but I also, I agree. I agree. You get with Sophie. She's... She's uh, her uterus is probably scrambled <laughs> from whatever shit they pulled in that cottage. So she's probably gonna need a support system. She's gonna need a while to recover. <laughs> oh my god. Um, but I don't want to kill anyone either. No, I think I'd kill the mother just because I don't like that she's trying to force her daughter into. Yeah, this. but it's just like not to say it's that circumstantial. It's good, but it's yeah. just like that's just how it was. Yeah, but but if I had to, I would kill her. And then I think I would fuck Marianne, and I would marry Heloise because she seems like a fun time. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think I I agree with you. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, my I like answer being a lot. fuck and marry Sophie and just join the clan. Yeah, vibe it out, and maybe I'll kill the Milanese gentleman yeah. so that Heloise yeah. and Marianne can stay together forever. I would kill that man, the man on the boat that didn't <laughs> that jump did, in, <laughs> that did not <laughs> bat an eye. Yeah. <laughs> But can, uh-huh. okay, for just to the very end of the movie. Yeah, because we haven't talked about this really. It's like the most beautiful shit. I swear to God, I like mm-hmm. had to remember to breathe because it's so oh, yeah. fucking beautiful. It's like many years later, and Marianne is at some sort of art gallery. Yeah, and she's she, got this showing of Euripides and what's yeah. his name? Orpheus. Yeah, yeah, the, of the story that they talk so uh-huh. much about. Oh, there's also all these scenes in the movie where she turns around and she sees Heloise in her wedding dress. Yeah, but like she's sort of like a ghost almost. 
Um, but, but then, and then that's the last time she yeah. sees her because she's like getting ready to yeah. be fucking she shipped says, away. Yeah. She says, "Turn around," and she turns around, and she's in the uh, uh, and everything comes dress. full circle. Yeah, no, um, that that but that story is very important, like thematically to the entire um, film. But then she goes to this art gallery where she has her painting, and she sees in the fucking brochure, she's like, "Oh my god." This bitch, I used to be in love with her. And so she finds this portrait. Used to. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, oh, it, it's assumed no. that yeah. many, many years have passed because it's a portrait of Heloise with her a daughter. Child. Like, yeah, yeah like what mm-hmm. we assume is to be her daughter. Mm-hmm. Um, and she has her fingers in, tucked in between t- book pages. Yeah, of the book pages. And then previously in the film, uh, Heloise had said to Marianne, like, oh, you'll always remember me by the way that painting looked, but I have nothing to remember you by. So she's like, sure, just draw, I'll just draw something in the margins of your book. Uh-huh. Pick a page. She's like, page 28. So she draws a little self-portrait mm-hmm. using a mirror that's tucked away in Heloise's labia. <laughs> that shot is gorgeous, though, <laughs> I will say. Um, and so I she, like that it was just very conveniently there. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, I want to know, I want to, um, a picture of you of what you look like when you're looking at my pussy. <laughs> like, that's, that's the only way I want to remember you, to be frank. Dude, the romance. <laughs> so, so she draws her little picture on page 28, and so mm-hmm. in the painting, her fingers are, fingers are in between. 28, which is like, I guess, like a little subtle, like, yeah, like I a haven't forgot you, yeah. like, type mm-hmm. of thing. And then she sees her- Once at, more, one, one more final time. Yeah, at the opera- or like the, no, the orchestra, orchestra yes. or whatever, and she sees her like across the way, mm-hmm. and um, she like watches her yeah. while she like hears music for the first time or whatever. Pretty much, but the song playing is um, Vivaldi's Four Seasons, yes. which is the song that Marianne played for her on the harpsichord. Yeah, she's like, it's before. a it's a song about a storm that's coming, which uh-huh. is like that is that doesn't even begin to describe <laughs> what the Four Seasons is fucking about. Uh-huh. But but uh, it's, it's such a gorgeous scene, and like I said crying wise oh my God. holy shit she, she, she like is overcome with emotion she's like smiling and crying yeah. and like having all these feelings and then you are kind of seeing it from marianne's perspective mm-hmm. as she's like watching yeah. her yeah. um it's, it's so beautiful it's so gorgeous beautiful. it's such an incredible performance what would you rate this movie because it's a 10 out of 10 oh for like me. yeah like a nine like honestly i just wish somebody had had a gun like um <laughs> Like, mean? give Heloise a gun <laughs> and let her fucking, I want, like, this, I want the spinoff. I want it to be, like, a mini series, mm-hmm. like, an HBO mini series where Heloise fucking goes and, like, dojo trains, like, fucking Beatrix Kiddo. <laughs> Stop, and, like, that'd be my And, like, ideal learns, how to, movie. learns how to, like, fucking sword fight. And then she goes and she murders the Milanese gentleman mm-hmm. and steals all of his money and then runs away mm-hmm. with Marianne and their adoptive daughter, Sophie. I would have... I mean, obviously, that's not... That's not the film. That's not the ending that we... We got... Whatever we... get. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like 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 a 9 or a 10 out of 10. This movie's so mm-hmm. great. I think you definitely have to be in the right mood to watch it. Like, yeah. if you want something, like, upbeat, fast-paced, not like this, this isn't it. Yeah, no. But if you're um, full of yearning and you want to exploit uh, that, if definitely you watch this. want to rip into some bread with your hands, <laughs> with your mm-hmm. French peasant yeah. fingers... Mm-hmm. What would you follow this up with? Okay, so as I was watching this, I was thinking about it, and they're talking about a convent. <gasps> and then okay. And then they're talking about the convent and the stuff that happens at the convent. And then another movie that has, like... Lesbians, lesbians in a convent? Lesbians I think in a convent, convent you're little about. hours. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What did you think I was gonna say? There was this... I don't know the name of the movie, but it's got... Sister Act. Oh, yes. <laughs> I do love that fucking film. No, Little Hours, it's like... Little Hours is probably All the, the nuns best. become lesbian witches, and they yeah. romp around, um, and it's really fun. They also, mm-hmm. they do drugs in that movie, too, I think. Really great, funny movie, has a lot of really great comedians and actors in it. Um, just definitely more of a romp than this one, for sure. So I think you followed up with something a little more upbeat, but also, like, period piece... Same kind of vibes. That's that's what I say. Yeah. Because you can't follow it up with like another love story. Nothing would hold a no. candle. Yeah, I just, all I know is that there's a, this other. I haven't seen it, so maybe I'm way off. But I know there's this other film. It's got Diana Agron in it, who just re, like yesterday, like pre- posted something and sort of came out. Diana like, Argon, Quinn Fabray. Yeah, yeah. She. It's on her Instagram. Um, it's just like a picture of her kissing this girl. Um, Good for her. Yeah, no, really cute. I was, I was taken aback. I, would, yeah, I want to give her a hug. Let's read this article called "What Is the Meaning of This Diana Argon Gay Smooching Instagram Photo." <laughs> <laughs> but it, I think it's, uh, but there's this other film. Um, someone might know it. It's, I think it's, 
Novitiate. I don't know how to say it. I'm, I will butcher every word. Um, oh, also French, also about lesbians? I th- I don't know that it's about lesbians, but there's lesbianism. Oh, nice. <laughs> but no, I think The Little Hours is probably ideal um, if you're going to follow this up. Because there, like you said, there are also lesbians and it is in a convent. And it's a lot funnier than that movie probably is. I would also say you could follow it up with what we're going to watch, which is Jennifer's Body. Hell fucking so, yeah. So tune in next week to hear all of our thoughts yeah, next week, Jennifer's Body. We know it's not an explicitly queer film, but it certainly is fruity. Yeah, exactly. And we uh-huh. love Megan Fox yeah. in this house. I think it, this is the perfect timing for us to be doing this, because of all those photos of her and Machine Gun Kelly, where he just <laughs> looks like he's about to perish, yeah. and everyone's like, she's back on her shit. Yeah, right, exactly. Like, come on, uh-huh. now's not a better time. We were meant to do this. But, um, uh-huh. yeah. Carol fucking limped. So that portrait of a lady on yeah. fire could sprint into the ocean. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, we're going to ask for um, some recommendations because we do have um, five weeks this month. And we picked four um, queer films, mostly women-loving women films. Um, but we don't have a fifth one. And as much as I love the book, Carol... Um, I don't love the movie. I used to really like the movie because it was the only piece of yeah, queer cinema that was really you're like, available. Oh, there just aren't many movies about yeah. lesbians and it's just, available to it's me. Just Kate Blanchett being really hot. <laughs> and just the like, sa- oh, yeah. come on, how can you not? Yeah, I'm like the soundtrack is good, but this is objectively very boring. Um, but if you got something that's like a fun, maybe like a cult classic, something that we mm-hmm. could, I don't know, vibe with. Yeah, let uh, us know. Let us know what are some of your favorite LGBT pieces of cinema. I'm still kind of uh, we might do Brokeback Mountain, but that movie kind of gets me going in a way that I'm not. No, I don't know if I'm ready to reveal that to everybody <laughs> quite yet. Um, maybe next year. Yeah, <laughs> maybe I'll we all know t- you a little better. I'll need some time just to really sit on it. Yeah. But, but yeah, give us and just in general, give us your suggestions. If you're yeah. like, hey, fuck your stupid themes, I really want to watch you listen to you talk about. I don't know, The Godfather. We're not going to do that. No, we won't. Because uh, <laughs> thanks, but no thank yeah, you. Thanks, yeah, thanks, and no thanks on that. We're one. a movie podcast, not a film podcast. <laughs> yeah. Film, cinema. Uh-uh. Um, but anyways, follow us on social media, yeah. Instagram and Twitter at the Swamp Pod. We already shouted out our TikTok. We'll shout it out again, the Swamp Podcast. Go like, comment, mm-hmm. all that good stuff. We really appreciate it. We love yeah. all of your comments, your DMs. Mm-hmm. They literally make our days. I cannot stress this enough. Oh, we also we never announced the giveaway from last night. Yeah. Oh, we gotta so we do can, that. Yeah, we'll put it up mm-hmm. on Instagram. But also, so Emily. If you'd like to yeah, random pick number a generator. number, nine between one and nine. Okay, it's nine. Oh, bro, sheer Claudia, bro, sheer's Claudia on Instagram. I didn't pronounce that right, I don't think, but I we will, will be reaching out to we'll you. We'll be sliding into your DMs. Mm-hmm. Congrats, you probably won uh, some fucking cool merch. But also, if you didn't win, if you're not bro, sheer's Claudia, you can also uh, enter our giveaway. We do them every month. We give mm-hmm. away some. Some merch, but you can also go purchase our merch. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's kind of reasonably priced. If you are like, hey, three dollars for a sticker, that's kind of fucking stupid. D- DM me, maybe uh, maybe I'll lower the price. Do we charge three dollars for a sticker? <laughs> I usually just put them in free with people's shit. Yeah. Nobody's ever just bought a sticker. Uh-huh. If you also, this is me saying, if you buy a tote bag, I usually do throw some free stickers in there. I don't mm-hmm. advertise that openly, mm-hmm. but I. Yeah. If you if you um, also if you have stickers, feel free to put them up around town or wherever yeah, you I, live. I like to throw tag some, us in them. Yeah. Tag us in a post Deep or something like some that. public property. I don't yeah. know. Um, I think it's really fun. I've put up some stickers around um, Hartford and all that stuff, and I'll be walking around where I put them up, and I'm like, hey, that's mine. If I did that in Sturbridge, I would get shot dead. No, that's, <laughs> that's true. There's just no guys. Yeah. By a suburban, suburban white mom. <laughs> On she takes out like a the- hooker gun. <laughs> She keeps it in her, in her, um, <laughs> Birkenstock. <laughs> um, but anyways, yeah, check out thanks, our website. Yeah. Thanks for listening. We yeah, love send us guys. an email. Happy Pride Month. Yeah, yes. And French lesbians eating bread together, <laughs> together, <laughs> together, <laughs> together, <laughs> together, <laughs> together. <laughs>